Hello everybody, my name is Ramit and I'm going to be talking about spring annotations. What I'm going to be talking about are some of the core annotations that are used in spring that really are very helpful. So the first annotation we're going to be talking about is at AutoWired. The AutoWired annotation is very helpful. It marks dependencies, spring resolves, and injects. This is mainly used with constructor, setters, and inje field injections. So, if we're using it in a constructor, I'll give you an example. So, we're going to make a class here, and it's going to be a vehicle. Right? So, in our vehicle, we'll have an engine. We'll have an engine. We'll have tires. And... Yeah, uh, engine and tires, right? So, we would use the auto-wired annotation when we're making our vehicle constructor. Public vehicle. It would be engine, engine, whoops. Engine, engine. And tires, tires, All right, and then we would just put it in this dot engine equals engine, this dot tires equals tires. So this is an example of using AutoWire for a constructor injection, All right? Now, I'll use uh, the auto wired, and I'll show you how you do it with a uh, with a setter, and then I'll talk about a little bit more of what the auto wired injector does. So, as we did earlier, we have an engine, we have a vehicle. So, uh, going along with the same one, right here, I'll use auto wired for a method on setters void set engine 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 this engine equals engine and there we go we have an auto wired setter so what does the auto wired do so audio wired has a boolean value right called required by default, it's true, and it uses a spring behavior to find a suitable bean. If it doesn't find a suitable bean, it stays true, otherwise it goes to false. If it stays true, it throws an exception, and, right? So if we use the constructor injector, all constructor arguments are mandatory. So that means in this one right here, to use auto wired here, whenever we construct a vehicle, it must have an engine and it must have tires, right? And one thing to note is when you're using auto wired injections, you actually do not need the tag here unless you are using more than two constructors in a single co uh, single project. Unless you're uh, declaring more than two constructors in a single class. So next, I'm going to be actually talking about the at bean annotation. This is one of my favorite things just because it's a bean. Who doesn't like beans? So bean marks a factory method and it initializes a, a spring bean. So how you would use it is you would actually just type in bean and we're going to keep going with the same thing engine 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 return new engine and voila we have a engine bean so spring will use it will call these methods when a new instance of the return type is required the resulting bean 
will have the same name as the factory method. If we want to name it differently, we can actually do so with the name or value arguments that we use in the annotation. So we could actually do it sort of like, uh, like this. New name. Well, you wouldn't actually put new name, you'd put your name, but realistically, say I'm doing an engine, I would actually type in engine here. But I am using the name as just a variable to use for this example. Engine. Return. Return. New engine. And there we go. We got a bean for engines. And one thing to know to add up the bean. If you're going to be using beans your main class actually has to have a configuration annotation in it. Configuration is just something that Spring uses to, as you would guess, configure the class, right? Um, so that's beans, how to use it, well, how to call them. So then we're gonna go for the qualifier. The qualifier. Be, uh, annotation. So qualifier is used actually in conjunction with the auto wired annotation to provide the bean ID or bean name to your uh, class. So for, if so, we have vehicles, right? So say we had actually two classes that required vehicle, right? So public class bike motorbike motor motorbike implements our vehicle class did I do that and we have class car no, it would be capital. Implement vehicle. All right. This is where we'd use the qualifier. So if we need, we need to inject the vehicle bean. Right. There's multiple where places where it can be injected, and there's matching things. So this is where we would explicitly name the bean using the qualifier annotation. So, for example, a biker, these two are our beans. Our bean refers to both of these. So a biker or a motorist, a motorist drives a car, right? So the motorist needs to be qualified to for the class car, right? And then they'll still be using a vehicle. Right. So this thing. Vehicle. So the qualifier basically indicates which instance of the vehicle bean we want to use. Because both the motorbike and the car are there. And we actually, I did miss. I said you have to use it in cause injectors, but yeah. So this would be calling the vehicle car beam to use for this motorist method. All right. You could also use field injection, but this is the basics. It's basically just a name tag or a classification. Next, we're going to be doing required. So required is used on setter annotations. This means this is a dependency we want to populate through XML and that it needs to be done. Otherwise, an exception will be thrown. So if we were to do a required public 
void set color string color did I type it with yeah right, string color and so our our vehicle has to have a color right but color equals color so what this annotation says is this has to be populated, right? And it'll be probably done through XML. And in XML, it'll look something like this. Bean uh, class equal com dot whatever your thing is. Uh, we're using this, so uh, vehicle. And then this is because this would be in an XML, it would have a property tag where we name it color. And this is where we assign the value right here. So the value equals purple. We have a purple truck. Purple. So this is these two work in conjunction so that the trait of color is always going to be getting gotten by them xml and it's just sitting in the xml where when you need it's needed uh next we'll talk about at value since we just assigned a value right at value so we use the value for injecting property values into beans. So it's right along with the required, except this time we're getting it into the bean, not getting it from the bean or assigning it to the bean. So say we use our, we're gonna use our engine. Engine. And I don't know why this is going. So we want to assign a value to the engine. And say we make it a V8 engine. So V8. V8. Eight. The engine's a V8. And it's a, uh, then we would, uh, no, value of type, string type. So we assign the V8 value to the string of the type of the engine. Sorry, my words are a little bit minced. Uh, so this dot type equals type and that's how we'd use value to inject a value into the constructor uh, so that's constructor injection and we could also actually use it for a setter um, if we were using conjunction with a setter we would use auto wired right and then we would say I'll give the same example using uh, uh, engine type so set type at value and we would name it v8 string type this type equals type so that's how we'd use it actually a setter injection so injecting static values isn't actually useful but this is really good for placeholder strings in value and when you have a defined external source right so say you were to use a properties file or a yaml file 
right? And then you were to load all the types in from there. This would vary. This would be really good, right? Because then you could say, for example, say um, in your properties file, you could have uh, engine dot type equal. Yeah, I'll put V8 here. I know we already use V8. I don't know what any other engines that actually stuff will say V8, right? So this is a lot. This is a properties file that you've loaded, right? There's different engine types, right? And then this will be in your properties file. And then in your code, right? In your class, when you call it, uh, you'd say at value, and we use a dollar sign to in indicate that it is not a static value and you say engine dot type and uh, right there engine dot type so it'll print as a line and then you would assign it string type so that's how we could actually use the value tag in a situation where we could actually pull it from another file and it's really useful when you have an external properties file and then you just want to pull stuff out of it um, next we are gonna use one of my favorite annotations and that's because it's name the annotations name is that lazy why is it my favorite because I love to be lazy so the, what lazy does is lets us initialize our bean lazily. Yeah, you heard it. We're going to be lazy in beans. So there are cases when we will need to create a bean when we request it and not. But this annotation is different from previous bean annotation, depending on how we use it and where we put it, right? We can add it to a bean annotation, uh, of the bean factory method, uh, like up here, up here, and it will delay method call, right? We can use it at the top of class at the configuration file so that every single bean in the class will be affected. Or we can use it with the auto wired constructors or setters to load the dependency itself via proxy or lazily do it to yourself I don't want to code so uh, I'll do an example of how we would do when that beans that lazy tag really quickly um, so at configuration I'll do at configuration since I'm not actually writing a class, this is an example of how I'd start a class that was making a lot of beans using the lazy annotation. Lazy public oops, public class vehicle factory. So you can have multiple vehicles. Right. So let's make our bean, and we want to set it to be lazy, All right? So we got our lazy bean here, and then just like before, we'd make our public. Uh, let's say the vehicle factory is making engines today. Engine. And return new engine and voila we got our lazy bean All right so the what am i talking what, what, what should i say about it when we put the lazy over here with the configuration right it indicates that all the methods with the bean annotation right here should be loaded lazily right 
also with when we put the lazy over the bean this this is basically reiterating that use the bean lazily all right and honestly that's basically it like there's not much else to this lazy annotation it's just really nice because it's lazy <laughs> i'm sorry if i'm uh like rambling on so our next one will be look up and i'm not actually just gonna i'm not actually gonna write any code for this uh actually eh. i yeah i will actually sure so what lookup does is it tells you to find um, it tells you to find an instance of the return type. It tells you to find the return type. So let's say I use lookup with the vehicles, right? So how I would use it. Um, public class vehicles vehicles blah 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 and I'll do an at lookup right here right and basically what the lookup is telling me is go get the instance of We'll use recall notifications, right? Recall notifications, get note, uh, get notes. Right. So what the lookup will do is it will actually find all the instances of when a recall notification has been used really just like honestly it's just convenient method and I think the last thing I'm actually going to talk about is the primary being the primary annotation primary is actually used in conjunction with beans but you don't actually do it like that so we actually can come back to an example we used up here when we were doing value. Uh, when we had multiple vehicles. So, uh, really quickly, I'll just do public class car implement vehicle, blah, 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 public class motor bike implement vehicle so we have two beans right now obviously we're going to use it. cars are more common than motorbikes right so when we're coding and we're referring to a vehicle most likely we'll be referring to car now we could use the value tag but a little bit of trickery here what we can actually do is uh, mark this as a component and then mark this as primary so this is now the primary beam right and then we can mark this be able to also mark this as a component component because it's also an option but the main thing is if we were to call a vehicle by default it will be a car and if we wanted a motorbike, we would actually use the, you guessed it, qualifier annotation. So, component, uh, pub, uh, public class driver. A driver is referring to somebody who drives. So, let's say drivers just refer to cars. So, we can just go ahead and say uh, auto wired to import the dependencies. Uh, auto wired import our bean a vehicle 
vehicle. And this actually will say implement our bean for a vehicle. But because it's primary is car, it'll implement car. So this implements car. Car by default. Right? And then, say we want to use our motorbike class, right? So let's say at component, because we want to grab a bean component, public class, and we'll call this guy a biker, right? A biker is also driving, but he's not driving a car. So we do our auto wired. But before we specify vehicle, we use our qualifier, qualifier, and right here we type in motorbike, which implements that we want to use the motorbike beam of the vehicle, a uh, motorbike vehicle beam instead of the car vehicle beam. So when we type vehicle, vehicle. This lets it know that this class wants a motorbike, not a car. So, basically, it'll inject the uh, motorbike bean into this class. Isn't that so useful? And that is basically what I wanted to talk about uh, in these annotations. There is more, but I really feel like I could talk forever and forever and mumble. So I'm going to call it here. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. For now, this has been Ramit. I hope you enjoyed.